The blue and yellow macaw is, as its name suggests, blue and yellow. Do you know what else is blue and yellow? That's right, this empty Amazon box. Well, after I turned it into a life-size blue and yellow macaw. At least with the help of a hot glue gun and some cardstock. Like parrots in the wild, this guy is approximately 35 inches long from his beak to the tip of his tail feathers, and he has a wingspan of about 40 inches. And to be honest, I think I slightly overshot his proportions, so I think he's actually about 5-10% to 10 bigger than a real parrot. And if you hit that subscribe button, we can make this number be 5-10% to 10 bigger. Haha. -ha. Very cool segue. Anyway, um, I will now show you how I made him. The first thing we need to do is make the base of the parrot, and to make sure that everything was scaled properly, I used Illustrator. You can see that I'm outlining the body of the parrot from two different angles, both from face on and then side profile. Okay, so that's cool and all, but how do I take these drawings and illustrator and turn them into a bird? For that, I let my Cricut cutter cut these shapes out onto cardstock. Then I use those cardstock outlines as stencils, then I outline the shapes onto scraps of the Amazon box. As you can see, I had to splice the outlines up a little bit because the mat that I was using could only accommodate shapes in an 11 and a half by 11 and a half square, so... After I cut the shapes from pieces of the cardboard box, I just hot glued them together and I added some more bits of cardboard to kind of fill out the shape, just like interpolations between the front profile and side profile because I wanted this guy to look like a parrot and not like a dreidel. And so that I could put feathers on later, I glued on strips of cardstock to bridge all of the gaps. Kind of looks like I'm mummifying him. And I wasn't really looking for this to be perfect because I was just going to cover it up later with feathers. But speaking of feathers, let's go back to Illustrator to actually design the way all of the feathers are gonna look. If you want to freehand draw feathers and then cut them out, that's cool. But I got a family to take care of in The Sims 4, so I'm just going to let a uh, the power of technology handle that for me and do it more efficiently and precisely than I could ever possibly hope to. It's 2022. I'm going to use uh, technology. To start off with, I'm drawing the flight feathers or the primaries and secondaries. The primaries are the pointier ones towards the edge of the wings and the secondaries are on the inside of the wing. And um, drawing might be a generous description of what I'm doing, but I'm feeling nice today. So we're just going to call it drawing. So the top parts look kind of janky honestly but that's okay because they're just going to be covered by other series of feathers like the secondary coverts or the primary coverts or the greater secondary coverts. Bird wings are just made up of a lot of layers of feathers most of which are called coverts. So I got a bunch of pictures of parrots from a couple of different angles and I scaled them so that they were more or less the same size and all more or less life size. It wasn't perfect, but this is an art, not a science. What's convenient about birds is that they're symmetrical. So I really only needed to trace the feathers for one wing and for one side of the tail and then I could just print these same feathers twice. So that made the drawing process a little bit easier at least. Oh, and I didn't show this part because it was kind of tedious and not super interesting to look at, but I put numbers on each of the feathers up near the top where other feathers would cover them, and this would just help me transfer the feathers from the digital to the material world. So after all the feathers got cut out, I'd just be able to line them up by looking at the number and I wouldn't have to constantly reference the illustrator composition while I was assembling the wing. Thank you. 
And then once everything was mocked up, it was just a matter of cutting everything on the Cricut machine. To get different colors on either side for the tail and flight feathers, I just glued two pieces together. I originally considered adding this other color by painting it on, but I didn't want the paper to wrinkle up in a weird way while the paint was drying. Also, while I was gluing some of the feathers together, my cat was just sitting on the table. There was a moth that was attracted to the lamp by my table, and he was just staring right at it for like half an hour. After letting the feathers dry overnight, I started attaching them to the cardboard wing flap. I'm starting by gluing everything on the front of the wing because I know that I'm going to pose the parrot more like the reference picture I was using to draw the front of the wing rather than the picture of the parrot I was looking at to draw the back of the wing. Originally, I was going to use a paper glue to attach the feathers to the cardboard. I thought it'd be nice to be able to adjust the feathers position as they dried, but then I realized that a slow drying glue would be really annoying because just scooching the wing like a micrometer completely scuffed up the the position of the wings so I just whipped out my hot glue gun again and the hot glue was really forgiving even though it dried pretty fast like if I messed up the position of a feather too badly I was able to just rip it off the cardboard and then rip the chunk of hot glue off of the feather and then just reposition it so it ended up being fine I mean it ended up adding a little bit more bulk to the wing than I might have liked but you know there's pros and cons of every medium I don't really know if you could call glue a medium but but, um, <laughs> you get what I mean. Oh, another con of it, I burnt my fingers like probably 50 times like over the course of this. I mean, hot glue isn't so hot that it'll actually burn you. Like you're not gonna get a blister from getting hot glue on you. It's just uncomfortable. But like the cardstock wasn't so thick that whenever I squished it into the bead of hot glue that it actually protected my finger. So uh, yeah, and that's also not including all of the times that just beads dripped onto my arms and legs. Like, I'm fine. I don't have any burns, but it's just, um, it, that, that part wasn't fun. But on the upside, I didn't get any paper cuts at all, which I was really proud of. I hate paper cuts. I mean, everyone hates paper cuts, obviously, but like, I was really nervous about getting like 20 paper cuts on my hands, but I got zero. I hope you're as excited as I am. What was I, what was I even talking about? I don't, the wing, I guess. I added a bit more bulk to the wing with some more cardboard because birds have like muscles and bones, not just feathers. I wanted to make this dude look like a bird and not just cardboard. I had to do a little bit more fiddling with the back of the wing or the blue side of the wing just because it wasn't exactly like how I had drawn it in Illustrator, like I said before, but it wasn't too bad. I just moved some feathers slightly differently and then it looked like a wing. The last thing I needed to make before starting to assemble everything is the feet. Parrots have toes that are designed for climbing, so they have two toes pointed backwards and two pointed forwards. They look a little bit funky, but that's that's just how parrots are. I took some air dry clay and wrapped it around a silhouette of the toes that I had traced in Illustrator to add some bulbousness. Using the air dry clay was great because it let me adjust the toes over time and flex them even after they dried out without them snapping off. I hot glued the feet to another scrap of paper that I used as the ankle and this ankle I in turn hot glued to a piece of cardboard that would become the thigh. And then both the ankle and the thigh I coated in air dry clay and sculpted to make look like a parrot leg. But it didn't have to be perfect, like most of this was going to be covered in either paint or feathers, so. And for the parrot's talons, I just clipped some bits of wire and then hot glued them into the tips of the toes. Though I don't really know if they're called talons, like I don't think of anything besides like birds of prey having talons, but also calling them nails sounds weird. So um, yeah, I don't know. Either way, regardless of what they're called, I painted them black because I could just tell that this parrot was actually a goth at heart. And also parrots just have black toes. And then the rest of its toes and leg, I painted a light gray and then added some black streaks for detail and dimension or whatever.
So now it's almost time to assemble this whole contraption. I'm just gluing the two colored sides of the tail feathers together first, since the tail feathers are also blue on one side and yellow on the other. So when putting feathers or fur or scales or something on a sculpture, it's usually best to start at the rump and then move towards the head while attaching the fur or feathers. This is because in almost every animal, the fur and feathers that are closer to the head overlap and cover the fur or feathers or whatever that are closer to the tail. It's just easier to stick something on top of something else than to scoot around an already glued down piece and then jam something under it. The big tail feathers I just hot glued on and I fiddled around with them a lot to make sure they were symmetrical. I did get all of the footage of gluing them on, but I tripped over my camera's power cord, which corrupted half an hour of footage of me gluing on the tail feathers. So you're just going to have to take my word for it that I didn't just hire some guy off Fiverr to glue on the other six tail feathers. Why would I, like what would be the incentive to do that? Doesn't make sense. To attach the legs, I tore some of the mummy wrappings off so that the legs could actually get shoved in there and eventually blend seamlessly in with the body. The goal was to make the legs look like part of the parrot's body and not like a tumor. I also supported the weight of the leg with a wooden skewer and I shoved this into the clay around the thigh and ankle of the leg and then hot glued the skewer to the base of the body. And then I disguised all of this um, engineering, let's say with some feathers. Oh, and you can probably tell that I attached the body in a pretty janky way to this tripod. I just stuck some wooden skewers into the cardboard base of the bird, and then I tied the skewers to the tripod with some wire. And remarkably, this um, jerry-rigging actually held up for almost 24 hours, even with me shoving it around while I glued on feathers and the wings and the legs. To attach the wings to the body, I glued three wooden skewers around the cardboard base of the wing and under the feathers of the wing. I wrapped the three skewers around one of the cardboard flaps of the parrot's body and then secured them in place with bits of cardboard and hot glue. This is all incredibly janky and I acknowledge that and I will not apologize for it because it worked. The parrot is still intact as I am recording this three days after completion, by far the largest sculpture I've ever made. So the engineering process was a bit of trial and error, let us say. Ultimately, the wings held on, although it did take quite a while, as you can tell by it being nighttime by the time these clips are over. After the wings are on and sturdy, the hard parts are all over, and now it's just a matter of adding feathers and decoration. I tried to make the feathers look kind of organically placed on the body, so like they grew on him and not the way that like a tumor grows, but I think that a really geometric and rigid sort of look using feathers would also be be really cool, but maybe for something more like a hawk or an owl, you know, a sort of bird that has talons, not nails. <laughs>
but the janky way that I attached the parrot to the tripod started giving after I left it overnight and also shoved it around a lot while attaching the wings and feathers and all of that, so I had to mount it to my ceiling. I had attached some long strings of floral wire to the wings and then I just attached the floral wire to a wooden hoop and then that wooden hoop to some more floral wire and then that floral wire to a hook and then that hook to a hook in my ceiling and it's still there it's still hanging and it really shouldn't just be hanging there because that's literally just the dead center of my room and I keep on running into it or this ended up hanging up pretty high so I needed to stand on a step stool to finish all of this but luckily that was just kind of a matter of adding some feathers and some details and the beak and stuff to make the beak, I just folded some black cardstock and notched its sides so that it would fold to look hooked. You might have noticed in some of the footage that I had put some white clay on the face, but I ripped this off because it looked bad and I wanted this thing to not look bad. I know a very lofty aspiration. What can I tell you? I'm a dreamer. And so I just replaced that with some white paper, kind of like an eye mask looking thing that I wrapped around its head. And then I just attached details that I cut into black cardstock. And for this, I used regular paper glue, not hot glue, because I wanted it to lay really flat against the face. And I used such a small amount of glue to attach like the tiny pieces of paper that it dried pretty fast anyway. So there weren't too many instances where the bits of paper slipped and slided around while I was trying to make everything look nice. Besides for some finishing touches I did off camera, like ripping the skewers out of its butt, I, um, that was pretty much all I did. That's how you turn a box into a parrot. You might not be able to see any of the box anymore, but it's in there. Is it a stretch? Don't answer that question. But what I can say about this is that it definitely is a parrot. I've made like one or two other birds in the past before and um, they were possibly the ugliest things I've made in my entire life. So I am glad that I have redeemed myself, at least to some extent. This is definitely not the ugliest thing I've ever made. So I'm pretty pleased. Didn't get any paper cuts, didn't badly burn myself, got a parrot. So yeah, it's a success. Okay, bye.